Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be installing the x-axis digital readout scale. This is by far the easiest of the three axes to install because the back of the table is flat, so this should be pretty straightforward. For that reason, this is where a lot of people start the digital readout installation. And it's not a bad place because you can get all the jitters out with the easiest scale. If you haven't already watched my video with the general installation information, go back and watch that now. It's going to help you a lot. That video covers things like the tools that you're going to need for this installation, as well as a lot of the pitfalls that you're going to encounter with the digital readout installation. So watch that one first. One tool you might want to have on hand for the x-axis installation is a bench block. This is exceptionally handy for the x-axis installation because the back of the table is flat. So after you've drilled your mounting holes and you're going to tap them, put this flat against the back of the table and this will help keep your tap nice and square. Now they have all sorts of tap guides out there on the market so you could use one of those as well or you could just get a piece of scrap steel, square it up and drill a hole that is a clearance hole for the tap and make your own tap guide. There's something that doesn't come with the kit that you're definitely going to want to make and that's a little stop back here. Now this is just a piece of aluminum that's drilled in counterboard for a socket head cap screw and there's a drilled and tapped hole into the back of the saddle here. And when the table is all the way back, this protects the scale by bumping into the dovetail on the column. Or if the table is above the column, this is below the scale and the reader head, so it will hit the top of the dovetail before your scale does. This is something that's very easy to make and you should definitely do it because otherwise it's incredibly easy to run the scale into the dovetails on the column when the table is all the way back. Just grab yourself a piece of scrap of suitable size. Uh, this is about an inch in diameter, uh, maybe 25 millimeters. And just make sure that it's longer than the scale is wide. And just position it so that it's below the level of the reader head and it's in line with the dovetail on the column. And one easy, quick trick for getting the scale aligned with the table on the x-axis is to use a couple of magnetic indicator bases. You can just stick them on the bottom of the table, just like that, on either side of the saddle. This gives you a nice, stable platform to put your scale on so you don't need an extra pair of hands sitting around. Just like that. Now right off the bat, your scale is aligned with the dovetail of the table, which should be aligned with the travel. So you can transfer your holes and do it very quickly. I'm not actually going to be using this trick though because I had a digital readout on this machine and I'm going to reuse the mounting holes for the reader head, which are right here. Now I'll tell you right now, these two holes for mounting the reader head are the biggest pain in the butt in this entire project to drill. I have the table all the way forward, and this is all the space I have, so it's not a whole lot to get a drill in there. Depending on your machine, you might not even have this much space because my bridge port has the optional 12-inch travel knee. Of course, if you have access to a right-angle drill, that will make the job a little bit easier. You should be able to rent those at your local tool rental shop. I mentioned that I'm going to reuse those two holes from my previous DRO, and in general, if I can get away with reusing a hole that already exists, I'm going to. It just makes the installation so much easier. Now if you've seen my video on milling without a digital readout, you'll recognize this piece. This is the piece that I made in that video, and it's for the reader head bracket on this scale. Um, these two slots here line up with the holes that are already on the back of my saddle. These two line up with the reader head. I'm going to go ahead and put this on now with the screws pretty much in the center of these two slots. I'm going to use that to go ahead and transfer the whole locations for the scale. So let's say you're in a situation like mine where you have existing holes that you're going to reuse. Uh, what I've done here is I've put my bracket on there and I'm going to put my scale into position with the reader head down on that bracket. And I can still use my magnetic indicator base trick. I'm just going to be doing it slightly differently. So in this case I'm going to sort of eyeball the scale as being straight to the tabletop. And I'm going to put one of my indicator bases right there, just sort of resting on the scale. And then I'll put the other indicator base on the other side. 
Now I'm keeping at least one hand on the scale at all times because I really don't want to drop this thing. So just be careful there. Now what I'm going to do is take my trusty machinist scale and I'm going to measure from the tabletop to the top of the scale on both ends. I'm going to get that as close as I possibly can and I'm going to use that to go ahead and transfer the holes onto the table. You've got slots in the mounting holes on the end of the scales so you've got a fair amount of wiggle room on where you can put them and still be able to dial in the scale to be straight to the travel of the table. So I've got this pretty much where I want it to be, right in the neighborhood. Um, I've already transferred the hole on this end over here, which is off camera, so let me transfer the hole on the other end. Alright, my holes are transferred. I take the scale out and put it in a safe place and then I'll drill my holes. So I'm spot drilling and then drilling, and I'm spotting deep enough that I'm leaving a chamfer for my tapped hole. It's just going to make things a little bit easier for me. Here's the hole that I've just drilled, and I'm about to go ahead and tap it. So I'm going to show you the use of the bench block. I'm just going to put that down flat against the back of the table. There's my clearance hole for it. I'll get my tapped hole lined up. And this is going to keep the tap nice and straight to that drilled hole. Once I've got it started like that, I can go ahead and get the bench block out of the way so I don't have to keep holding it. Once I get this one done, I'll finish the other side as well. Now for you Bridgeport and Bridgeport clone owners out there, I'd like to point out the drain plugs here. Uh, these are for if you're using coolant on the table. Uh, it gives the, the coolant some place to go. I'm not using those, but I want to make sure that oil is not going to leak all over the scale, so I've just made sure to tighten them up so they're beyond the flush with the table. That way they don't interfere with the placement of the scale. Next I'm going to mount the scale and I'm going to start the process of dialing it in. First, I'm going to dial it in so it's straight this way, which should be pretty straightforward since the back of the table is flat. Uh, but once I get that done, then I'll go ahead and dial it in this way as well to make sure that I don't end up with any kind of angular errors. One thing you're definitely going to want to do before you put the scale on is clean the back of the table. Uh, the table tends to collect a lot of chips, and you may not be able to see them, but there might be small ones there that could sit underneath the scale and make your life a little bit harder. So just take the solvent of your choice and spray it back here and wipe it off. I'm using brake cleaner because it's easily accessible. And it really does a good job without leaving a residue. One last thing before you put the scale on is make sure these holes that you've drilled and tapped are really clean. All those little cast iron chips in there will make the screws jam up and potentially strip out. I've gotten in there with compressed air. You could use one of those air in a can with the thin red straws to try to blow all that stuff out from the bottom. I actually just went in with a uh, croil or you could use WD-40 and did the same thing. Just uh, spray all the way down at the bottom and let the chips get flushed out. After I've got them sprayed out, you can go in with a pipe cleaner and use a real one. This is a cotton one that I got from a tobacco store and uh, you can go in there and get anything else out that's left. I'm going to go ahead and put on the scale. At this point I still have the red shipping clips on the reader head because I don't want it to be bouncing around a lot. You also want to make sure that you've got the cable coming out of the side going towards the display so it's easier to route. I am using a lock washer as well as a flat washer on there just to make sure that nothing backs off on me. I'm just going to snug these up for the time being and then I'll get it close with a scale and then I'll switch to a dial indicator. I'm about 7 sixteenths of an inch down there. I'm about half inch down on this side. 
So let me see if I can drop this side down just a little bit. Now I should be close enough to switch to a dial indicator and we'll get it dialed in first along this face and then secondly along this face. If you do have any errors on this face here, so going that way, the set comes with a large number of shims like this and different thicknesses and that's how you would correct that problem. Just like in the other scales, and this is something I covered in the general installation video, take your time dialing this in. The more time you spend right now dialing this scale in means you're going to have to do a lot less later on when it comes to linear compensation in the control. I'm all set up now to dial in this face. I've got my table moved all the way over that way and I'm going to crank as far as I possibly can this way. I want to get as long a sweep as I possibly can because that will make it more accurate. Again I'm sweeping in this face first. Theoretically it should be nice and straight but I always like to make sure. I've also moved my reader head bracket down as far as it'll go. That way it doesn't interfere with my readings or damage the reader head while I'm sweeping in. I could just take it off, but I've got enough clearance that I can drop it out of the way. I've also got my dial indicator positioned in such a way that it's going to clear my vise because I didn't want to take the vise off the table. That's something you may want to do, but right now my shop is an absolute mess and uh, this is the only flat surface that doesn't have anything on it, so consequently it's got my vise. Okay, that's at the stop on the other end of my uh, table. And it doesn't look like it's moved very much at all, less than a half a thousandth. Uh, I saw it wobbling back and forth a little bit on the way, but that's because this is an extrusion, so it's not going to be 100% flat. Either way, it's certainly flat enough. If you get this dialed in within two thousandths over that kind of length, you shouldn't have any problems. Let's go ahead and switch the setup now, and we'll dial it in up and down. I'm all set up now to sweep in the scale up and down, and I think I've got it to where the indicator will touch at both ends, but it's not going to run out of travel. We'll see. When I have to adjust this, I'm going to leave one of the mounting screws pretty tight, uh, and then I'm going to loosen up the other one and do all of my adjustments from that end. That way it's swiveling on the tighter screw, and I won't have to chase my tail quite as much going back and forth. I have removed the red shipping clips from the reader head, uh, just so they won't interfere with the dial indicator reading. Uh, but don't throw these away yet. You need these to set the spacing on the reader head. I'm also going to sweep along the entirety of the length of travel that I have. I want to make sure that I get the most accurate reading possible. I've already swept back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's roughly in position, but I still have a ways to go. It looks like I'm about nine and a half thousandths out on this end, and I'm touching more, so that means the scale is too low on this side. Now be sure to be aware on your indicator which direction it moves. This happens to be an inner rapid and it moves in the opposite direction that most indicators do. Since I'm touching more on this side, I'm going to just loosen this one. And I'm going to see if I can move it up. So that's about where it is on the other side. Let me snug it up and we'll see how it goes. Wanting to move on me, of course, as I tighten up the bolts, so... Let's crank back across. So just to make sure I'm still touching the scale on this end with my stylus, I'm about three thousandths out from where I was on the other end. I'm going to re-zero on this side and make all of my adjustments on the other end. It's a lot more cranking, but I think you get better results. Generally when you're dialing something in like this, or for instance the vise on your table, um, I find that making all of your adjustments on one end gets better results because 
you start to run in circles if you try to make adjustments from both sides. It just keeps walking around and uh, then you're never really sure where you are. If you're curious about how long the sweep is here, it's uh, just a little under 24 inches or right around 600 millimeters of length. Okay. So from end to end, I'm out about two thousandths right now. I'm still touching a little bit too much on this side. I did see there was a bit of a dip where it um, kind of went down and then came back up. That could pretty easily be explained by the table being all the way over each end. So it's wanting to sag down right now, and when it's cranked all the way on the other side, it wants to sag down over there. So let me just get it adjusted and we'll see what it looks like. I saw the same thing where it dipped down lower in the middle and then came back up uh, and I do believe that is the table sag. Um, the most deviation that I saw was about two thousandths and I'm within a half a thousandth from this end to that end so I think I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna double check that the bolts are both tight and they are. So now it's time to put the reader head into position and we're going to reinstall these red plastic clips again because these set the clearance between the scale and the reader head. Once we get that into place we can move the reader head bracket up, get it all tightened, and then we're ready to plug the scale in and see if it works. This part is really straightforward. If you get the red clips back into position on the reader head, the same as they were when it shipped, then that gap is set by the plastic so you can just squeeze upward with the reader head bracket and I'll go ahead and tighten that up get this totally tight and then I'll install the screws onto the bottom. Now the clips are really convenient in this way because they not only set the distance up and down but they also center the reader head and get it straightened to the scale. So as long as they're in place when you tighten up these screws on the bottom you should be good. Okay, the screws are all tightened up, making sure nothing wobbles. I can now go ahead and take out the plastic clips and throw those away. We're done with them now. Now one last reminder to go ahead and make yourself one of these. It does not come with the kit. Um, this happened to be the one that I already had from my old uh, digital readout, so I won't be showing the making of that. But it's really easy. Just drill and counterbore it for a socket head cap screw and put the hole somewhere down here below the reader head, but in line with the dovetail on the column. That way, if you move the table all the way back, it's going to hit here before it hits the scale. And if you're above the dovetail on the column, it'll hit the bottom of this before it'll hit the reader head or the scale. I've got the scale plugged in now. Make sure to plug it in when the display is off, otherwise it won't recognize the scale. And let's see if it moves. Yes, it does. Okay. So it looks like we've got it installed correctly. Uh, that's going to be the end of this video. I'll do all the linear compensation and things in a later video that's dedicated specifically to that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.